Uh, hello, this is a note about a QTVLM, a unique feature of QTVLM, which is very powerful, and you will use it uh, all the time once, you're, once, you're, you, once you learn it. And that is searching a chart for a place name, or there's even more sophisticated uh, uh, searches, which I'll show, like, you know, showing, find every rock that I can see at low tide or something like that. But let's start out with the basics. So um, we have to, right now there's no charts showing here in the program. There's no charts loaded at all. And so we have two kinds of charts we can look at, the raster charts and the vector charts. Once we're done, we can search any kind of chart or we can search this blank background map here without any charts at all. But we have to start out with the vector charts. You must load the vector chart. So I'm hitting now, I'm on a Mac and I'm hitting a, Option Command V. Option Command V. That would be Control Alt uh, V on a PC. That's an important key. It takes you basically to this screen. You can do almost any. It's your. It's a shortcut to the Preferences screen, but it f takes you right straight to the ENC chart page. Okay. So I'm going then to Folders, and you see there's no. Uh, uh, well. The, I have some charts loaded, but they're not activated, right? This, this computer program knows that on my computer, somewhere I have all the ENCs for the state of Washington and all the RNCs for the state of Washington. But there are no check marks here, so it's not, act, it's not ac activating, it's not uh, accessing them. But I want to now add... Uh, I want to add some charts, and I'm going to store, and you'll store your charts wherever you find best, but here's a suggestion. Here's documents, charts. Here's charts, charts. And then here's the Starpath training charts here. And, um, and so I could go in and just say, and assign this one, and that would assign just the, see if you look in here, here's all these E and C charts, the vector charts, or here's the raster charts, all these raster charts. These are the ones we use in our course. Uh, and so if I want to, I could just assign the ENC, say okay now, or I could come back and assign just the RNC like that, or you could just go back here and assign this, and then it's going to take everything that's inside here. So we have all the ENC in the Northwest and all the RN, just up in the region where we have our course, and then we have two charts in Hawaii, uh, one, R, one ENC and one RNC at the, in Maui. Okay, so I'm just going to assign all all of these, but here's what we need. We need these guys to do the database, to build the searching database. These pictures, these RNC, they don't have any information in them at all. They're just a static image. So I say okay. So now these charts are assigned, and then that's it. That's all you do. That's assigning the charts, and we're done. Now, and then it's building the database right there. Now, uh, and then I can just say okay. And presumably now I could turn on raster charts. And yep, yeah, there's raster charts, or I could shut those off and turn on vector charts, or I could keep them both open. Usually you're better off going one way or another. But once those are there, for the first type of searching, which is by file, by, by object name, once, uh, once all you have to do is load those. I don't have to view them. I don't have to do anything. I just have to be sure that I have them assigned and the little check mark is active at least to start. Once I'm done, I don't even have to do that. But now, in a sense, I'm done, and I'm, I'm doing a shortcut here to get to the search engine. Command F. Command F, and I'm going to search for, like, Trial Island. Uh, trial Island search, and there it is. And then you can just uh, double-click. Uh, let's see, are these the same place? Almost. I double-click it, and, and it will go there. And so here, uh, that's done, closed. That's all there is to it. I have took the option search in this. There's two options here. I'm going to come back to this one later. This is the one we're doing now. Search in here. That's the default. You just type the name and hit go, and you click one of these, and it'll take you there. Close. And then sure enough, if you zoom in, this is, uh, this is Trial Island. And then I could do something like Command F, and then look, look for Lake Hansen, H A N, this is something in our course, Lake Hansen, and I search. Whoops, there's no Lake Hansen. Okay, let, okay, so let's suppose you do that. I know there's lakes, uh, lake, so I'm gonna just search on lake. Okay, search. Wow, a bunch of lakes. Now, okay, I'm gonna orient, I'm gonna, set, I'm gonna 
see if I can click this, I can, uh, I can sort that. I'm gonna find what this, why Lake Hansen's not there. Uh, Lake, um, oh, that's because it's Lake Hancock. Okay, so really what I want is Lake Hancock. I can either say, I've found it now and I'm there, right? Or I could start back here and say Lake Hancock. When I, now that I know the real name and enter, and there is just this one. And uh, sure enough, uh, there it is, Lake Hancock. Okay, so that works. Um, now, let's see, what else did I wanna do? Uh, that's about all there is to, now once that's done, you could actually, uh, you can shut off these vector, turn on the raster charts here, and go for like, and the way, the reason you'll use this a lot is because we have practice problems, and now that we know you have this powerful tool, we don't have to tell you exactly where everything is. And let's say we have a problem, uh, Command F, at Port Townsend Canal. Townsend Canal, Port Townsend Canal. You go, and then you click it, and, and there you are. You found yourself, at, now you see I did this all with, uh, it looks like it searched a, a raster chart. In fact, it searched the vector chart, which it knows about and built a database from. But, uh, okay, so that's that. But now, this is, uh, let me, here, I'll just il illustrate something here. Let me go in here to the charts and undo the chart. So now I have no charts, okay? Okay. Now, I remember we had one chart. Let me try this, Command F. There is a place in Maui. We have, remember we had a, Hulu, we had a place in Maui. Yeah, okay, so those work. So look, and even though I'm not looking at the chart, I could find, I can search with that. So, and, and you can also, uh, Command Q, you can just shut the thing off and start it again, you know, and uh, there you go, there's still no charts, Command F. Uh, let's say I want Protection Island. Protection Island, is it gonna find that? Yeah, Protection Island, right there. Okay, and so on. So you see, that's a really powerful tool. You use it all the time. Now, let me go back and turn these vector charts on because the second thing we wanna do, you must have the charts showing. So I'm gonna do this again, Command V and so forth to get here, folders. Now I'm gonna turn these guys on and say okay. It's building the database. Now I've got, to, I, now I actually have to have looked at these vectors. So what I'm going to do is zoom out and be sure that I'm looking at uh, all of the vectors. Now I can do a lot more, see I've looked at them. I don't have to zoom in, but I just have to have loaded them here like that. Now I can start doing more sophisticated things. Let me, uh, for example, let me just, um, Let's do this. Okay, so I'm gonna do Command F. I'm gonna look for all rocks that are always underwater. Now, and that's looking at the whole Pacific Northwest. So I, you go up here and you go to displayed charts now. And I'm looking for a feature, that's an object, and it's gonna be an underwater rock. Let's see, underwater rock, like that. And the attribute, ah, now is what you have to know, water level effect. Now, if you go, you have to then back maybe open up, if you we've got videos on this, how you use the object catalog, and if you look up water level effect, and you see water level effect, um, always underwater is a three. So that has to be three. So it's a re, I guess it would be, a, no, I think it's integer, and it would be three. Let's just see if that works, okay. Oh yeah, that works. Oh, and there's tons of them. Okay, there's tons of them. All right, and but whenever I find one of these, like if I go, if I find one of these and click it and go there, uh, wherever that is, that's gonna be a rock that's always underwater. This is one that happens to have the sounding given and so forth. Okay, but you see there's ton of those. So let's look a little more sophisticated use of this. Where is Protection Island? Here's Protection Island. Now I'm holding down the command key and I'm dragging a little region here that I wanna zoom to. 
And here's Protection Island over here. Now let me ask this question. Suppose I want to find out, of all those rocks around Protection Island, I want to know which ones could I see, which ones are, have a drawing height given. Or, you know, they, or they uh, ha have a, dr a drawing height given, right. Now, the, okay, so let's see. But I just want this area. I don't want to search this whole northwest. So I just go up here. You could click this button or, and make a box like that that covers the island. So I'm going to search just in that. That's also true with your searching names. You can set a window and just search for names within that given area. Now I would do Command F, Command F. F, and what am I looking for? Well, there's still rocks. Oh no, I've got, yeah, displayed charts, and I'm gonna look for rocks, that's still, okay. Now when you're here, you can click this and then hit the letter U. You can't go beyond that, but you can at least, you can at least do one level of uh, underwater rock. But now what I want is the value of the sounding, value of the sounding, and that's going to be, that's a number. Oh, and it's got to be just less than zero because drying heights, drying heights are given as negative, they're, they're negative soundings. So I just have to say less than zero. Okay, I think that's it. I mean, <laughs> a little bit, uh, I'm sorry to experiment on the wing here. Okay, okay, so it worked. Um, so there's three of them. It turns out, to, of all those rocks around there, three of them have a, dry, a known drying height. There's one. Where is it? That's this guy. This guy right here has a drying height of 2.1. Oh, they're all 2.1 meters. Oh, those are in meters. Okay, but you could, okay, and there's that and so forth. So you see you can do that. Now, if I stop and say, I'm just gonna look at that rock right there, close, and then I come over here and right click and say vector information, Oh, that's, ah, okay. So the search engine, I've got my, I've got my uh, uh, height set to feet. But the search engine, that's got, that's working with native numbers in the ENC. Those will always be meters. Those will always be meters in your search engine. You can't, we can't uh, do that kind of conversion on the wing. Okay, but this is a rock that has a drying height of seven feet. In other words, when the tide is equal to zero, when the tide is equal to zero, this rock is seven feet above the water. Okay, so that's a search engine. Uh, what else we have here? Any notes more on that? No, that's all, except you do have to have the, this function only, this very special function when you're searching on objects and attributes and special things like that, then you do have to have the vector charts. That will not remember what you did. But now you can close the chart and come back and search for names, which is the very common feature. All right, I'll stop there on that, that uh, note.